Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be installing an OEM powered tailgate lock on my 2019 GMC Canyon. So from the factory up until 2019, the Canyons and Colorados came with a manually locking tailgate, meaning you have to use your key to lock and unlock the tailgate. So right now it's locked, now it's unlocked. Now there are kits on the market that exist to introduce a power locking tailgate that powers the, the locking mechanism with your key fob or the door switch inside your vehicle. But then in 2020, they introduced this as a standard feature on most trims. So I'm going to be retrofitting a 2020 lock handle into my 2019 Canyon. Thanks to user Bumble Truck on the Colorado Fans Forums for helping me out and identifying the parts needed to do this operation. He helped me by taking pictures of parts on his 2020 Colorado inside the tailgate and looking for the wiring, the actuator, the handle, the part numbers, all, everything that I needed. So big thanks to him. Appreciate it. With that said, he helped me identify three core parts that you're going to need to do this process. Number one is a handle from a 2020 Colorado or Canyon. I will post the part numbers for all these in the description box below. And this is identical to the one that's in my truck right now with one small difference. This has a different actuator arm here for the locking mechanism. The ones in our current vehicles up until 2019, they have a narrower slot here on this little arm and they do not have this extension. That is really the key part. Everything else in your truck, you'll be able to swap over. Like if you have your camera, you'll swap it over. There's a little bracket that gets screwed into here. You'll also need a different type of lock housing. I'll talk more about that later but you'll be able to swap over your key core and then you'll be able to hook up your two um, pins for the tailgate latches here and here everything else will just you know fall right in so you definitely need this this is important to have second is the actual actuator so this is a motor that just actuates that locking mechanism so like i was saying up until 2019 the trucks had a different arm here this new handle has this extra piece on the top here and once it's all said and done and connected the open space there on that plastic piece is going to fit down over that extension there and when it rotates when you lock and unlock your key fob this will rotate that way or rotate that way, locking and unlocking the tailgate. Lastly, this is the wire harness for the actuator. Now, this is what's gonna plug into the actuator itself on this end. This is what would have gone out to the bottom of the tailgate and underneath the truck by the spare tire with your camera wires and then connect into the factory harness on the vehicle going up to the body control module. I'm gonna end up cutting this connector off and putting my own connector here so that if I ever need to remove the tailgate, I am able to just disconnect it here. I wasn't able to find the female version of this connector, otherwise it would have been a nice OEM connection with my new harness. Some other things you're going to need is a set of wire. This is a set of 16-2 wire that is going to be used to run the signal wire up to your cab. You're going to need some miscellaneous connectors. I'm going to use some of these butt connectors that have heat shrink built into them. Um, these are vampire taps. I'm going to use these to get the signal from the BCM. Probably this red one here. These are handy. I've used these before. This is the two pin connector that I'm going to use right by the tailgate so that I can quick connect and disconnect if I ever need to remove the tailgate from the vehicle. And then this is some wire loom that I'm going to use to wrap this cable here up to the front just to make it extra protected. On the back side of the tailgate, there is an access panel with eight screws that are T15s. You need to remove those eight screws and open up the access panel. This is what it looks like on the inside of the tailgate. This is the back side of the handle. And so the way this works is there's these two rods here and here, these red and green connectors that actuate the two latches on either side of the tailgate. Now when you pull the handle, the handle rotates and pulls those rods open, releasing the latches. And that allows you to open the tailgate and lower it. Now, over here on the right is the key mechanism that allows you to lock the tailgate. So when you put your key in and rotate that lock, it flips the lock lever. And then when you try to pull on the tailgate, it does not move those two rods to the latches. So the first thing we need to do to get this old handle out of the way is disconnect these two connecting rods. And they're very easy. There's the plastic here on this part that just rotates and then allows you to pull that rod out. And these stay in the handle. And the same thing on this green one, you're just gonna rotate it out of the way with your fingers. Then you can lift the latch and get it out of the way. Now, if your truck is equipped with a camera, there are two T15 screws down here that holds this bracket on that you also need to remove. You will need to save those two screws and the bracket. That allows you to lift the camera up out of the way. There's the camera. So save these two screws. I'm just gonna move this out of the way for the time being, just so we have room to work. To remove the handle from the body, there are two 10 millimeter screws on either side. So just go ahead and do those now. 
and you're going to save these screws as well. Once you have those two screws removed, you're going to push it out through the other side of the tailgate and it's going to have to kind of rotate because this part here is like holding it in place. So I suggest you come underneath and then push it through, making sure the rods are out of the way and then like I said, rotate it out just slightly and then pull it out of the way. So here are the two handles side by side. The left one is the new, the right one is the old. You can see what I was saying earlier about having a different size claw mechanism on the old one versus the new one. Plus the new one has this stud in the plastic there, whereas this one does not. What we need to do next is transfer our key lock over from the old one into the new one. In order to get that key lock out of this housing, there is a clip on either side here that is just holding it in. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, simply rotate the clip out of the way and you can remove it. Then the lock housing simply comes right out of place. So there are two types of lock cylinders on GM trucks. This one on the right is from my Canyon and this one on the left is from my Chevy Silverado. I just so happen to realize they are slightly different lock cylinders. And the difference being on my Canyon, when you insert the key, you have a 45 degree turn and remove and that's the locked position. And to unlock, do another 45 degree turn back straight up and down and then it's unlocked. So that big arm moves quite a bit. It's got quite a large arc inside the housing. On the Silverado lock, it has a spring-loaded mechanism on here. You can just sort of barely see it right here. There's a spring in there. And the way this one operates is with your key, you do a quarter turn to lock and then the spring brings it back center. And then another quarter turn left to unlock and the spring brings it back center. So this type of lock mechanism won't work with the new actuator. The arm on here gets in the way of the plastic mechanism on the handle. And here's an example. This one is from a Silverado I just had laying around. It has the same style, big crab arm with the post here that we're modifying into the canyon. If I was to drop this key in, as you can see, it doesn't work to lock and unlock the crab arm because it gets caught. Now I thought maybe I could just trim a little bit of this off and it would just get by that stud. And that will work for locking and unlocking the tailgate with the key, but not with the new electronic actuator. So if you take this one, for example, which this one's meant for this style of new arm, that returning motion of the actuator on the key, the fact that this key returns to center when you twist it allows this crab arm to have free play enough to move back and forth. Furthermore, the electric actuator will be able to freely open and close this crab arm without interrupting this lock. If, for instance, you had the tailgate locked and you hit the key fob unlock, the actuator would move that to that position, not affecting this key lock at all. Now, if you hit the actuator again to lock, it would lock it. Then you could also come back if you wanted to lock and unlock the tailgate with your key, no problem. The actuator will be able to lock and unlock the tailgate freely, no problem. So this is where you can see the difference of those two crab arms I'm talking about. This is the Canyon one, which is meant for this style, and this is the Silverado one. So what I need to do is transfer my core for my key from this lock housing into this lock housing, and it can be done. We need to take off this silver piece, remove the retaining clip here, and then the key core will come out. So I'm gonna start with the lock housing on the Canyon first. You've got this gold retainer on top of this silver actuator arm, and you just need to pry it up just slightly to get the tip of this little lip out of the hole there. And I do it with a pair of needle nose pliers where I grab the ridges here and just bring it out like so. That allows us to remove this actuator arm. We're gonna do the same thing now on the Silverado lock housing. So we're gonna grab a, a lip of this retainer ring, lift it up out of place, pull it down. Then we can lift this silver part off and inside here, there is a spring. So just use your needle nose pliers to grab one end of the spring and lightly remove it. Don't let it fly off. That is the spring there. So the way you get the core out from inside is you need to remove this metal sheath or cap, I guess you could call it. And you just use a flat head screwdriver and just sort of pry it off. It's relatively easy. If it's rusty, it may be harder. It should come right off like that. Then you need to actually take your key and insert it into the lock body and make a full rotation and the core will come out all the way like that, leaving just a hollow cylinder here. So we're gonna retain this core so that our key works in our tailgate and we're gonna swap it into this one over here. 
So we need to do the same thing on this Silverado housing. So we're just going to pry up the metal cap on the key housing. Just like that. Then I'm going to take my key, insert it into the key housing, and rotate it out. And there we go. If you acquire a spring-loaded lock housing, but you do not have the key for the key core, you can take it to a locksmith and they will remove the key core. Then you can use the housing to insert your current key core from your Colorado or your Canyon. And insert it into the Silverado housing, rotate it just slightly, and then removing my key. And now the key core for my Canyon is in the Silverado lock body. Now it's just a matter of reinstalling this spring and this piece and then the retainer clip. Also, don't forget to install the cap back on top of here. When you reinsert the key core back into the Silverado housing, you need to rotate it so that this little tab that I'm pointing to, it's right here, and it rotates when you rotate the key. See that tab is rotating? It needs to be facing this lug right here. Otherwise, you won't get the locking arm to sit in the right spot. So once you have that lined up, you can take this spring and drop it into place, making sure one side of the spring is on that side of the lug, and then use your needle nose to bring the other end of the spring on that side of the lug. Then you're going to drop this actuator arm onto the top, and then using your gold retainer clip, install it over, and then slide it back, and now you're in business. So now I have my key core from my canyon in the Silverado lock body and this will drop into the new handle that I bought and work with the actuator no problem. In this next sequence, you're going to see me using the old style 45 degree lock housing being installed in the new 2020 handle. That's because I didn't realize that I needed to use the spring loaded lock in the new handle yet. The installation of the housing is the same regardless of which type. Just know that you need to use the spring loaded type. But before you go any further, you need to reinstall the metal clip that holds in the lock housing in the handle. It just very simply seats back into the two grooves on either side of the plastic in the handle itself. Now in order to get this back into the tailgate you need to insert it from the bottom side, the back side of the tailgate, and just rotate it into place over the lip to line up two studs here and here into the holes. Then take your two 10 millimeter bolts and thread them in on the two mounting holes. And just get these too snug. They don't need to be super tight. Just enough so that they won't loosen up. Next, I'm going to reinstall the camera into the handle. So it's kind of tricky, but you need to line up the camera hole in that hole there first. And then this whole, because these are two separate pieces, they're not connected. But once it's all screwed down, this bracket holds the camera in place. I'm going to drop the camera into the hole and then lower the bracket down on top and then install those two screws. So now with the correct lock housing with the spring-loaded arm, I'm going to drop it in place in this slot right here where it goes. Now this next part, we're going to actually drop the actuator down into place and bolt it in the spot. The actuator comes with one of these bolts pre-installed, and this one is just going to slide into this pre-existing slot like so. And then the other side is just going to sit on top of the, this plate right here and You'll have to find your own bolt to bolt this into place, so I just had one laying around that I'm going to use with a lock nut on the bottom side and then tighten that into place. This is a T30, so first I'm going to tighten that one up. And then whatever bolt you choose from here, just tighten it up from the bottom side. And last but not least, you need to reattach the two control arms for the latches. So just drop them into the holes and then rotate that plastic clip over the top. Probably easier to do when this is out of the way, but you can still do it now. And just do a test of the manual lock operation and make sure the key still works to lock and unlock the tailgate. Next we have to do a little harness modification to this. And using all these combination of things like I showed in the beginning, we're going to put a new connector here on the end and fish it down through the tailgate and drop it out by the spare tire. On the connector for the actuator, we're going to keep this one with the blue connector on it. That's going to go into the actuator itself. And then we're going to cut off the end of this one here that's supposed to be underneath the tailgate. Now the way this thing 
comes apart, there's just this like clamshell with four locking tabs on it and you just need to pry those up and then you can remove the bottom part because we want to look at the wire colors on this harness because that's going to be important for us later on. So inside this connector are two colored wires. There is a gray and then there is a brown with a yellow stripe. These are important because they match the wire colors for where we are going to pick up our signal at the BCM at the front in the cab. So the gray is the lock circuit and then this brown with yellow stripe is the unlock circuit. So the reason I took this connector apart was just so I could see those wires because we have to keep that continuity um, the same all the way up to the front when we connect it to the BCM. So now I'm just going to snip this connector off and we're just left with our two wires here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to install one of these pigtails that I got. It's just a two pin connector that is actually it's waterproof. It's nice. So these will go together like this and there's a screw collar that goes over the top of this and we'll lock these together. Now in the case that I need to take the tailgate off I can unloosen the screw collar, disconnect this, disconnect the camera wire and then the wiring for both the camera and the actuator are disconnected from the vehicle. So the way I'm gonna do this, it doesn't really matter which end you pick, I'm gonna go with this end on the tailgate. It comes with these two little wires. I'm probably gonna to have to strip back just a little bit because I'm gonna add these butt connectors on here. Now you could solder these two together, that'd be a good connection, but I'm just gonna go the lazy way and just use these butt connectors. So I need to strip down a little bit more off of this insulation on these wires here. Now these are 16 gauge, so I'm just gonna strip off maybe another quarter inch or so just so I have enough to grab in those butt connectors just like that. Then I'm going to install this connector. Then I'm going to strip off a little bit of each of these wires and install one in each of these butt connectors. So now for this purpose I'm going to install the gray wire into the black on my connector. And I'm going to install this brown and yellow into the red. Now it doesn't matter which one you do, but you need to keep it the same across the whole way. So I've got those nice and tight. They are shrink wrapped, so I'm going to get my heat gun out and shrink these down so we have a nice watertight connection. After I was done with the heat shrink, I just wrapped the whole area with electrical tape a couple inches on either side of the connection. So now with our modified harness, we can plug this side into the actuator and then feed this side down through the tailgate and out just right by the spare tire. So this side of the connector plugs in right here with a locking tab. And then the other end of your wire, you're going to feed down and you're going to follow your camera wire down into the tailgate. And there's going to be a spot here where it passes in through the body and goes down by a spare tire. So I fished a coat hanger from the back up into the front here and then I'm going to tape it onto the end of my new harness and then I'm going to pull it through and bring it out right there and then from there I'll be able to use my fingers to push it through into the body. And just gently pull it through. Like I said from here you can just pass this connector down into the body. This comes out right at the same spot the camera wire comes out and then right here by the spare tire. So in the beginning of the video I showed you this 16 gauge 2 wire that I bought for this project. I just cut off a long strip of it enough to get from back there to all the way up here underneath the dash. And then I've already connected my other half of the two wire connector that's going to go back by the tailgate. And remember what I said about keeping the colors the same. So from the OEM harness that I cut off, the gray I connected to the black. The brown and yellow I connected to the red. So that means I want the red and black wires coming into this from the actuator, coming all the way to here and staying the same. So I've got red to red and black to black. The next step in this process is hooking up the wiring at the BCM connector behind the dash here. Now it's not really necessary to remove this dash panel but I'm going to just because it's easier to show while filming. Then to remove this panel once you have those screws just get a hold of one side and start pulling the pins. Being careful over here by these two controls for the four-wheel drive and lights you need to disconnect the harnesses from the back side of those. Then behind the dash panel there's this metal that is held on with four screws. I'm also going to remove that too just for accessibility. 
Once you have those screws removed, you can simply lift this off of the little hooks that are on these metal tube brackets. I have a bunch of other wiring in here for my Boost Auto Parts towing mirrors, but the connector we're concerned with on this install is the pink connector. I'm gonna reach in there and disconnect that pink connector and pull it out so we can work on it. So on this pink connector, the lock and unlock circuits are tied to two wires in the top row there. We've got a gray wire over here in pin number one and a brown with yellow stripe wire over here in pin number four. Pin number one, the gray wire, is the lock circuit and pin number four, the brown with yellow stripe, is the unlock circuit. So if you remember back when we were hooking up to the OEM harness to the actuator, I said remember the color wires you're, putting, you're passing through. So on my harness, I need to connect the black wire to this gray, which will be the lock circuit, and then the red wire to this brown and yellow, which will be the unlock circuit. But first I need to install a couple of these little vampire taps on the wires themselves. So I'm gonna hook one up to the gray wire first and close the jaws. And I've got a pair of needle nose pliers here. So then I'm gonna put one on this brown and yellow connector. I tried a red, which is for 16 to 18 gauge wire, but this one, this wire seems to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna use a, a larger vampire clamp on this one. So once you're done, make sure those clamps are shut tightly and locked on those two vampire connectors. So I've got my red and black wires and black needs to go to gray for the lock circuit and red needs to go to this brown and yellow for the unlock circuit. Next, I'm gonna go plug this in to my harness back by the actuator and then do a test. Now here's the connector I put on that's coming from the actuator on the tailgate. I'm just gonna plug these together close the screw collar, make sure it's nice and tight, and then I'm gonna go plug in the pin connector on the BCM. So we have success. Now the only thing I'm gonna do is tidy up this wire by attaching it to the main body harness that runs along the frame and bring it up to this door panel. There is a grommet underneath the carpet here that I'm gonna bring the wire up through and bring it into the cap. Now I've got my wire run up along the frame just underneath the driver's side door. And I just zip tied it along the factory harness all the way back. It's kind of tough underneath the bed because you're fighting with the fuel tank and the axle. So just make sure you get it up over the axle and then you're gonna have to drop it down to the frame harness, which is like right about here. Once you get it up to here, it gets easier. Just zip tie your harness all the way up to the cab and underneath the driver's side floor pan, there is a plastic plug in the floor pan that you can bring the wire through by drilling a hole and using a grommet. That is where we're gonna bring the wire into the cab. To get access, you need to remove the sill plates here. And I'm gonna drill a hole in that plastic grommet and then insert a rubber grommet and I'm gonna pass my wire through into the cab. And then from there, bring our wires up to the BCM. In order to get the sill plate out, just reach in here and start to pop it out. And it comes out relatively easy. Then you can peel back the carpet and find that plastic grommet, which is right here. So I'm gonna take a screw gun and I'm gonna drill a hole through that and put my rubber grommet into it. And I just have this little rubber grommet that fits my wiring that I'm gonna pop into that hole. So I got my wire coming in and then I pass it over here underneath that wire harness and then I bring it up behind and then pop it out right there by the BCM. And then I'm gonna put two new connectors on the end of it and plug them back into my vampire taps. Then I can plug this back into the BCM. So I've got everything tidied up in there with the pin connector back plugged in and everything works great. So I'm gonna tidy up this panel here, plug back in the two connectors, uh, put my ground back on for my Boost Auto Parts towing mirrors, and then reinstall the sill plate here, and basically that is it. The final thing you need to do is close up the access panel on your tailgate. And last but not least, you can now lock and unlock your tailgate remotely. If you like this video give it a thumbs up love it if you subscribed stay tuned for more videos later